So my son the other day, he took the liner out of the trash. You know, for all of you men in the audience, a liner is just a bag. He took the bag out of the trash. <laughs> I heard someone call it a liner today and it just kind of stuck with me. But anyway, my son takes the bag out of the trash. It's one of those little uh, shin high trash cans you see in a, a bathroom sometimes, right? This is where this one was at the time. And then he stands in the trash can and he looks right at me and he says, Papa, take me out. <laughs> I said, no, Kostya, Kostya, we don't, we, we're not going to take you out. And he says, throw out the trash. <laughs> take me out. <laughs> and... and <laughs> Now this, this is so genuinely funny because he's two years old. This is the second joke he's ever made. And uh, he's hilarious. He keeps doing these things or he just, he tells jokes. And I don't know if he knows he's telling jokes. I don't know if he was using that as a ploy to get outside. I don't know. I don't know. But it, still laugh. I'm still laughing about it the whole time. How are prices in your area, huh? That's kind of what's on my mind. Because uh, I messed up today. Today, uh, so there's a rule in a recession, and it's don't lose your job. <laughs> that's, that's the rule. You know, and like the, you know, don't hit people with sharp sticks for food. That might be up there. But don't lose your job. <laughs> it's a really big rule in a recession. And I don't care what anyone says. We're in a recession right now, and it's going to get worse. And God, that's really negative. Uh, can we rephrase that? Like everyone thinks we're not in a recession. Um, I don't know. I think I think we're kind of in a recession, and things might get a little more difficult. But don't lose your job. So, <laughs> um, man, I was late today. I didn't text management. That's our that's our method of letting people know we're going to be late. It didn't cross my mind because we're down to one car and I'm dropping kids off at daycare and I'm taking wife to work and I got to be in on my work from home day because there's some kind of corporate development day. We're all going in the division meeting. We're all going to meet up and talk about our, the colors of our shirts or our like synonyms for what trust means and very, very important meeting. It's very beneficial for every minute that you spend there. So I get the kids dropped off and I get the wife to work. And I'm just happy that I'm able to make it into this wonderful division meeting today. I'm thinking this is an absolute win. I told my boss I, I will be able to make it. I will make it to the meeting on Monday that we got to go to. <laughs> And I do, I make it, I pull in, and you realize you're late, you're, you're late to work. And you didn't text them to let them know that you're late. And now you gotta get a nice talking to. Have you ever seen The Matrix, the first Matrix with Neo and, uh, well, I mean, they all kind of have Neo, right? I, my point is the 1999 release, The Matrix. Check it out this summer with Keanu Reeves. Uh, <laughs> he's late, he's pulled into the office, and the boss is standing there. No, actually, the boss is sitting there. He's standing, and uh, he's like, some of us think we're special. And the rules don't apply to us. Obviously, this is not the case. Uh, you, can, you can choose to be at your desk on time, or you can choose to find another job. That was just so pertinent to today's meeting. It wasn't anywhere near me getting fired. It wasn't like that. It was just like a, Luke, what are you doing? <laughs> Why don't, you, why don't you just text me when you're going to be late? Uh, I'm tired of your crap, Luke. You know, and then she hit me with a dry eraser. No, no, no nothing like that. Everything was fine. But uh, it's little things like that that are so demoralizing. Because you're like, I did it. I found a way to make it all work. And you messed up. And it, it like makes you scared on that little inside place somewhere. Somewhere behind your, in your stomach there. Uh by your diaphragm is what I was thinking. And 
<laughs> you're thinking of how the prices of eggs are through the roof and gallons of gas are still still kind of kind of up there um looking at the car right now got three bars of gas gonna have to put some more in it soon really not looking forward to that and rent is only going up congress is doing congress things the fed is doing fed things oh <laughs> you know you just you get a little you get a little nervous thinking uh what's gonna happen in this nation over the next 10 years and and then you you were late to work today that's the number one rule of a recession is to not lose your job you could if you could just get that together that'd be really good so yeah a little bit stressed but trying to trying to handle it in a healthy way i'm not gonna get fired i'm sure i will have a good talking to before that happens so no matter what the kids will have some food and this is something dave ramsey's right about okay there's an order of operations when you're running out of money and it starts with food and then i don't remember if it's shelter or utilities but I, i'm gonna guess shelter than utilities but my wife is gonna tell me it's utilities than shelter doesn't matter I think she's right though, because you need running water, you know, to do stuff, and then you pay the rent. Because you can probably talk to your landlord and be like, "Hey, I need an extension. I'll pay the late fee." I, but you know, water bills—they turn off your water pretty quick. So, but uh, but he's right about that. Like, make sure everyone can eat. Make sure you got running water. Then make sure you got a roof. And my kids got that, so we're good. And I'm going to be just fine at this wonderful little job that I've got. The division meeting went well, by the way, if anyone was curious. Look at that. I'm growing the hair out. But uh, it was a good division meeting. And uh, I'll be fine. So trying to handle all this stress in a, uh, a positive way, a healthy way, a um, sober October way. Let's phrase it. Let's phrase it that way. Um, it's so easy to spend $5 at the mini mart and have a beer. It's so easy to spend the same amount of money and have some form of nicotine because you know, that will, that'll make you feel better. It'll make you feel better. It won't, it won't. And it won't reduce your stress. It's going to enter your system. You're going to enjoy its effects and then you'll actually be more anxious. Because now you'll have a craving. And for any of you out there who have never used any substances ever, um, the way I think of nicotine is kind of like hunger. Uh, when you're hungry, you have a need of some kind. Or thirsty. Thirsty is great. Everyone gets thirsty. right? Um, when you have a nicotine addiction, it's like you've added another necessity bar. So you have hunger and thirst and, and now a nicotine bar. And... <laughs> So you just kind of add another need that you've got to fulfill and that can be good or bad. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. There's no judgment on that. But if you want to understand what it's like, that's what it feels like. You're, you're like, what is it that I need now that I've done the thing that I usually do before I have nicotine? There you go. So just don't start because it's, it's not worth it. And when you stop, you're going to have a very interesting time. Um, and you'll be fine. Just. Worst case scenario, get through the, the uh, get through the first three days. You'll be just fine, okay. But uh, if you wanna you wanna do something like fast when you're quitting, then it'll go much faster. You'll be okay. Go do some cardio. Go to a sauna. Sweat that stuff out. You'll be right as rain. So I'm trying to handle all this stress, all this ridiculous stress. These are things I can't control, by the way. I can control getting to time, getting to work on time. I can control performing well at work. I can't control what the economy is doing or what the Fed does or what Congress votes on or anything like that. I, well, I, I can write to my local official and, and my state representatives and whatnot, and I can vote. Yes, I'm with you. I, I know that there are avenues of communication that I can take. That's not my point. My point is like, what can I do right now in the next 30 minutes that changes the course of the U.S. economy? So, just just thinking of it in that regard, I probably shouldn't worry about it too much. And lately, how I've been feeling is uh, you've really got to take control of your mindset, of your thoughts, and, and push them in the direction you want to go. And it, almost like the, the woo-woo crowd, okay? Define that however you want. 
but it's like your your thoughts shape reality your thoughts dictate what the universe is capable of okay not in the the solipsistic kind of sense but in a um a manifest destiny kind of way where it, what you're focusing on is what's going to appear over time because that's all you'll notice whether it was you manifested it or you just keep running in a direction until your your tunnel vision on that thing sees the thing do you understand so by putting something in your vision that is completely ugly or out of your control all you're doing is filling your brain with a bunch of stress a bunch of worry about something you can't control and then you're not going to go anywhere near to where you actually want to be I mean, <laughs> cuz you're thinking about the economy instead about the like software you want to write or the the gym uh, personal record you want to set whatever it is and so i've i've been really trying to take healthy measures to handle this stress that i'm feeling it's like a previous video sorry car breaks down that it's not fun uh and we've we've organized things well now but it's still a hassle see today in transportation and timing and and it feels like even with my wife and I working we're barely affording everything we're barely making it it's paycheck to paycheck and I've got a state job so I've been there now long enough that the pension program kicks in and I lose a hefty chunk of my paycheck you know like, right to the gut and student loan interest started again and we've, we've been paying our student loans and we'll talk about that in another video any student loan stuff but when you see that interest go up and you've got one of your loans is still over ten thousand dollars in in summation and it's got a higher than six percent interest rate and then you see that interest go up after just 15 days Mm. <laughs> um, whoo, those three years without interest are, uh, those were pretty tasty. I'd, I'd like those back. Let's bring those back. Uh, you guys can argue all day about student loan forgiveness. That's fine, dude. Go at it. But be civil, please. Um, <laughs> but, uh, that no interest felt good, okay? Because <laughs> at least when you gave them $50, it went down by $50. It didn't just pay the interest that accrued over the last 20 days. So anyway, little things like that, they just kind of add up. And I will get to my point about handling stress in a healthy way. I just, uh, I, I really wanted to make this a rant because I filmed four different videos today. All under 10 minutes. It wasn't a lot of time or anything. But every single one of them just wasn't. I just didn't like it. The third one, I, I started, or the Let's call this number four. The third one, <laughs> I thought I liked it. And then mom and the kids came home. They were out for a walk and I was filming at the house. And they came home and they're making noise and I lost where I was and I didn't know if I necessarily wanted them in the background or not. And, and so I just scrapped it. <sighs> but I told myself I'm gonna put out a video today. So to heck with it, here we go. You guys are getting little journal entry because I'm I'm struggling with those healthy stress reduction techniques take some deep breaths go stretch let's meditate I just went for a run that's very helpful it's wonderful I'm still no closer to my goals and my brain is like a, a slave driver and the bills are on the, my, the back of my brain and maybe or maybe not there's a recession going on or will happen or could get worse. And you showed up late to work today. So, definitely need to incorporate some of those healthy stress reduction techniques. Also, the wife and I are doing Sober October, so if anyone else wants to join us with that, it's awesome. We're, we've got some goals set. and it's, uh, it's been very important to us that we focus on not having anything between us and our goals and our family and just as a whole. 
Like nothing crazy happened. There's been no like problems. It's just if there's wine, we're gonna have wine. And now is not the time because of everything I've been talking about in this video. Now is not the time that we want wine in our house because we're gonna be stressed and we're gonna to wanna to focus on those deep breath in, deep breath out. We're gonna to wanna to focus on that, or not focus on that, <laughs> and just go have a glass of the red stuff. Is it easier? Maybe, but over the long term, one thing we noticed was it was impacting our sleep. Our sleep was worse after you spend a few days sober and then you have some drinks nothing crazy one glass two glass 14 glasses nothing crazy right and you wake up the next day and you just feel now hungover is way too strong a word you just feel like your sleep wasn't good you just didn't get rest and we can't afford that we can't afford that not with our work schedule not with kids who wake up between 5 and 6 a.m no you just you can't so Let's see where we're at in 30 days. Nothing for 30 days. Nothing. And I love that example I was giving earlier about nicotine because that is my drug of choice. I am so boring, lame, dirty, whatever word you want to use, however you think of nicotine. It's just in, in my life over the last 30 plus years. That's, that's been the thing that I've enjoyed. I, my first nicotine experience was when I was 14, which is not good. I really hope my kids make better choices. I'm going to do what I can to help them through that, through life, to make those good choices. But that's, that's what I think of. I don't think like, gosh, I could really use a beer or mm, I'm stressed out. I want to go partake in some other things. No, I, I think like, does anyone have a cigarette? Does, uh, is anyone opposed to some, some like chew around here? Does anyone have some? I have a dollar bill. Like, it's so rick ridiculous. Like, you, you can go so long and, and you, just, you still think about those things. And it's, it's such a weird thing to bring up now in my life. It, it doesn't fit anywhere in my life. Um can't spit in the office place and uh yeah i it's just weird it's it's interesting thinking about where you've been in your life and where you are now and and so when you have those random thoughts of like oh i wonder if i could have some nicotine and then like that would help somehow but then you realize it wouldn't help at all you're just a completely different person than you were at 14 or later right obviously in my 20s i was using that as well so I know this was super rambly, but um, I really did deliver on those positive techniques to help relieve stress. Uh, number one, exercise. Number two, deep breaths. Number three, meditation and stretching. It, it really is that simple, by the way. Um, you got to get good sleep, and it helps if you're sober for your sleep. It's it's helpful. Uh, but that the ridiculousness behind that kind of advice is how simple it is and how effective that simplicity makes it. Uh, and it just works. You just go for a run and get some sleep, drink some water, you'll be fine. All right, this month, let's, uh, let's be less weird, maybe. Be less rambly. A few more focused videos on the way. I think that'd be fun, because I... Today was a good example of how I need to put time aside and just go sit down, pick out your 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 target, and uh, just do it. I'm kind of rambling. I'm losing focus at this point. I'm going to go inside and get some work done. But thank you very much for your time, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Don't be late to work. <laughs> Don't start nicotine. It's not worth it. And... Uh, have a great night.